Lesson 1.11, Evaluate Numerical Expressions. If you didn't see 1.10, it's linked in the description when we first learned about expressions and equations. As we learned in the last lesson, video 1.10, a numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that has numbers and operation signs. It does not have an equal sign. So this would be an expression, this would be an equation. It has an equal sign, this one doesn't. To evaluate means to find the value of. We can evaluate a numerical expression that has more than one operation by following the rules of operations. These rules are called the order of operations. The first thing we do is anything that's within parentheses. Next, we do any exponents. Then we multiply or divide from left to right. And then we add or subtract from left to right. So for many years, people have used PEMDAS to remember the order of operations. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. And this is called an acronym. It's when an abbreviation forms a pronounceable word. And for many years, decades, people have used, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember PEMDAS. And this is called a mnemonic. And mnemonics help us to remember. Can you think of your own PEMDAS mnemonic? Can you think of a sentence that uses P-E-M-D-A-S that will help you remember PEMDAS? The order of operations tells us the order in which we should evaluate an expression. And more than one answer is possible if the operations are not performed in the correct order. So here's with the order of operations. It says anything in parentheses should be done first, and we don't have any, so we skip to exponents. There's no exponents. So now we go down to multiply or divide from left to right. I see division and addition. So we need to divide first. 16 divided by 4 is equal to 4. Now we add or subtract. We do 8 plus 4. That's equal to 12. Without the order of operations and just solving from left to right, we might do 8 plus 16, which is 24, and then divide that by 4, we get a 6. We have a completely different answer. Here we have with the order of operations. We see multiplication, so we do that first. 2 times 6 is 12. We see multiplication here. 3 times 5 is 15. Then we add or subtract. So we have 12 plus 15 is equal to 27. Following PEMDAS, we do all multiplication first, then add the products. Without the order of operations and just solving from left to right, we have 2 times 6 is 12, plus 3, that's 15, and 15 times 5, well, that's equal to 75. We have a completely different answer. Pay attention to clue words in a word problem that can tell us which operation sign to use in our expression. For addition, we might see in all, more than, sum, or plus. For subtraction, we might see less than, more than, difference. For multiplication, we might see by, times, product. And for division, we might see evenly shared, each, every, or quotient. Now, these are only a few of the many possible clue words that are used in word problems. And if you look at the addition and subtraction, they both use more than. So if you see more than, you might need to read other words around it to find out what needs to be done, which operation do you use. To evaluate an expression with parentheses, we follow the order of operations. We perform the operations within parentheses first. So here we have a problem. Each batch of oatmeal cookies that Mrs. Kim bakes uses three cups of flour, six cups of oats, and one cup of sugar. Mrs. Kim wants to make three batches. How many cups of flour, oats, and sugar will she need in all? So we think, to make three batches, we'll need to multiply each ingredient by three. This is for one batch. And we notice that it says how many cups of 
flours, oats, and sugar will she need in all? So it's not asking about how many cups of flour will she need, and then a second answer of how many oats she needs, and then a third answer of how much sugar she needs. It wants to know in all how many cups of ingredients will she need for three batches. So for one batch, she uses three cups of flour, six cups of oats, and one cup of sugar. We need to add these together. We can write the expression three plus six plus one for the flour, the oats, and the sugar. We're gonna add them together to get a total number of cups for one batch. And she's going to make three batches, so we're gonna multiply it by three. So three plus six plus one is inside parentheses, and then when we get the sum, we're gonna multiply that by three. So we've written our expression. Now we perform the operations within the parentheses first. Three plus six plus one is 10. Then we multiply. Three times 10 is equal to 30 cups of those ingredients. We can rewrite an expression with parentheses to equal a given value. So we need to put parentheses around a part of the expression that will make it true. We have two plus four times nine minus five. And it's saying it should be equal to 18, but the parentheses are missing. So what we can do is we can write the expression and try putting parentheses around different numbers until we, and operations until we try solving them using the order of operations to see which one actually is equal to 18. So the first thing we try is a 2 plus 4 times 9 minus 5. 2 plus 4 is 6, so that means we have 6 times 9 minus 5. Well, 6 times 9 is 54. Now we do 54 minus 5, that's 49. So that's not the right one. And I'm sure you can look down here and see the right one, but just stick with me. So we move the parentheses over to around the 4 times 9, and the order of operations says we have to do that first, so that's a 36. That means we have 2 plus 36 minus 5. Now we just add or subtract from left to right. We've got 2 plus 36, well that's a 38. We have 38 minus 5, that's 33. So that didn't work either, that's not worth equal to 18. So we try putting it around the last two numbers and operation sign. We have 2 plus 4 times a 9 minus 5. So we do 9 minus 5 first. That gives us a 4. Now we have 2 plus 4 times 4. We have to do multiplication first. So we have 4 times 4 is 16. That means we have 2 plus 16. So the parentheses should have been around the 9 minus 5. And we had to go through each step, putting the parentheses around different numbers and operation signs, and then working them out to see which one would finally equal 18 using the order of operations. We try writing parentheses around different values, then use the order of operations to find if it will equal 18. And if you notice, we increase the value of the answer by multiplying greater factors. Here, because we had 2 plus 4 in parentheses, that means we had to do a 6 times 9. And here, because 4 times 9 was in parentheses, we had a 4 times 9 as a 36. And this answer is 49. It's greater than this answer that's 33. And that's because 6 times 9 is greater than 4 times 9. 54 is greater than 36. So by grouping them differently, we created larger factors and created a larger answer, didn't we? We increased the answer. Here we've got four problems. We need to evaluate each numerical expression. That means that we need to find the value of these expressions. And we can see in the first one that we've got 6 plus 54 in parentheses. So we're going to do that first. So now we have 60 minus 5 times 10. According to the order of operations, we should do multiplication. 5 times 10 is 50. That means we have 60 minus 50. That's equal to 10. Now for this next one, we have a 12 plus a 14 minus 6 in parentheses. 
So do you know what we should do first? If you said 14 minus 6, you're right. That's 8. That means we have 12 plus 8. And 12 plus 8 is equal to 20. Now we have 2 times 37 minus 7. And of course, we should do in the parentheses first, and 37 minus 7 is equal to 30. That means we have 2 times 30. And 2 times 30 is equal to 60. Now we have 9 times 7 minus 10. I see parentheses, so we need to do the operations within the parentheses first, and 9 times 7 is 63. That means we have 63 minus 10, and 63 minus 10 is 53. So remember the order to do it within the parentheses first, no matter what the operation is. Then, if there are exponents, like powers of 10, we're going to do those. Then we multiply or divide from left to right, whichever comes first. Then we add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. Now here we have an expression that we can solve in two ways. We can solve it with the order of operations, or we could solve it using the distributive property. We learned about that back in video 1.3, and that's linked in the description too. The distributive property is like a mother bird feeding each baby within a parentheses nest. So we would distribute this 3 to the 2 and then to the 4. But let's look over here first using the order of operations. We see parentheses, so we do the operations within parentheses first. We have a 6. 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. Now we do what's outside the parentheses. 3 times 6 is equal to 18. So we can solve this using the distributive property. Instead of doing the operation within the parentheses first, we distribute the 3 times this 2. We have a plus sign because there's a plus sign between the 2 and the 4 here. Then we distribute the 3 times to the 4, and we have 3 times 4. We do our Multiplication, 3 times 2, which equals 6. We do our multiplication, 3 times 4, which equals 12. Then we add 6 plus 12, which equals 18. So using the order of operations or the distributive property got us the same answer. We can solve the expression either way. We need to circle the first step in each expression, then evaluate. Be sure to follow the order of operations. So we need to circle the first step in this expression. Do you know what we should do first? If you said 5 times 6, you're right. We're going to do this first. And 5 times 6 is 30. That means we have 3 plus 30 minus 8. Well, 3 plus 30 is 33. And if we subtract 8, that's going to equal 25. Let's try this one here. We have 20 minus 3 times 6. We need to circle the first step. And following the order of operations, we need to multiply first, so we're going to do 3 times 6 first. That's equal to 18. That means we have 20 minus 18. That's equal to 2. For this one, we've got 5 plus 2 minus 4. For the order of operations, it says the last step is to add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. This one's got addition first, so we would just do 5 plus 2 as the first step. 5 plus 2 is 7. We have 7 minus 4. That's equal to 3. Now we've got 6 minus 4 plus 8 divided by 4. Do you know what we should do first? If you said division, you're right. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. That means we have 6 minus 4, which is a 2, plus 2. That's an easy one, isn't it? That's equal to 4.
pardon my bad handwriting. Now we have 5 plus 5 times 5 plus 5. Do you know what we should do first? If you said 5 times 5, you're right, because that's multiplication. We would do that before addition. And 5 times 5 is 25. Now we have 5 plus 25 plus 5. We can add in any order. We can say 5 plus 25 is 30, plus 5 more is 35. We could even add the 5 and 5 together to make a 10 and say 10 more than 25 is 35. That's equal to 35. Now we have 2 times 3 times 7. I see parentheses, so we should do parentheses first. 3 times 7 is equal to 21. And 2 times 21 is equal to, do you know, 42. Sorry for the bad handwriting again. So even though we had a multiplication symbol here and here, this was in parentheses, so we did it first. Which ending makes the statement true? We need to circle whichever ending makes the statement true, this one or this one. So the statement is, the difference between an equation and a numerical expression is that an equation has an equal sign and a numerical expression does not, or is it the difference between an equation and a numerical expression is that a numerical expression has more operation signs than an equation. Do you know which one is correct? Well, if you said this one, you're right. An equation has an equal sign and a numerical expression does not. An equation can have many operation signs. It could have just as many as a numerical expression, but an equation has an equal sign and a numerical expression does not, or we can say an expression. So be careful when you're writing your expressions so that you do anything that's inside parentheses first and you look for those clue words if you're writing an expression from a word problem. Our next lesson, 1.12, we're going to be talking about grouping symbols of parentheses, brackets, and braces. I believe you can do this. I really do. And I hope you have a really great day. Bye. Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl?